Okay, our next presenter is uh, Jonathan Helmos. He will uh, talk about building and distributing Python software with Conda. Thank you. All right. So uh, I am Jonathan Helmus. I work at Argonne National Lab, but most of this has nothing to do with my day job. It more has to do with my hobbies after work. Um, so I have a problem that I think ooh, uh, a lot of us have, and that is that there's a lot of really powerful Python libraries, a lot of really nice data science and scientific libraries, but installing these libraries is difficult, and maintaining them with the most up-to-date versions can be very time consuming. And so we've developed some uh, solutions, and one of them are uh, traditional package managers like AppGet or Brew, but a lot of times these don't have the most up to date packages, or they're missing them entirely, and they're also operating system specific. So if you do your development on a Mac, and then you go to deploy, and it's on a Linux machine, you find out the packages are completely different, and you don't know how to use AppGet, you've been using Homebrew. Uh, another solution is PIP, which is the Python, package, uh, Python Packaging Authority's official tool for installing Python packages. Of course, this unfortunately builds a lot of packages from source, which can take a little while. And if you ever have someone come and ask you what vcvars.bat is, you also need a compiler, um, which isn't always true, especially on Windows machines. Uh, PIP is also limited to Python packages, so if you need you know, a big C library, PIP isn't going to be able to install it. Uh, final solution is, well, you say just build everything from scratch. But that is the problem. That's not really a solution. That's just restating it. Um, so I think a better solution is Conda. So Conda is a cross-platform package and environment manager. So cross-platform, it works everywhere. Um, it was created by Continuum Analytics, but it's open source. It's under a BSD license. Um, it was created to distribute Python packages, but it's actually language agnostic. It can in, uh, be used to install any type of packages written in any language. Um, it does not require administration privileges. This is really nice if you're on a lockdown system, you can install it as a user. Um, but you do have to install it either using Anaconda or Miniconda, although we'll get back to that at the very end of this uh, talk. So how does Conda work? So first of all, Conda is a package manager which means we can install uh, binary conda packages. So let's do a little bit of that. So if we do, so this is a clean Python 3.5 environment. Um, let's run that again. Uh, if I try and import pandas, so the very nice package, oh, I don't have it, right? So I can do conda install pandas. It will go off to the internet. If I don't have these packages already, it will download them, but I've already done this, so it's a little quicker. And now if I run Python, import pandas, it all works, and I can check. I have pandas version 0 0.18. Great. The script that my uh, colleague sent me, I can now run, except he told me, well, actually, I'm using pandas 0 0.16. I say, okay, well, that's not ideal. So let's see what I have installed. I can use conda list, and I see I have pandas 0 0.18. I can remove that. Conda remove pandas, it'll remove that. And I want to install the version that my colleague has, which is 016. It'll figure out, um, in this case, I need a slightly different version of NumPy, but it takes care of that. And now if I run Python, I have the correct version of pandas. If I want to go back and, you know, after I've run this guy's script, I want to see if it works with the new version, I can do conda update pandas. And now I'm back up to 0.018. So just to recap, conda install, conda remove, conda update, those install, remove, or update conda packages. And conda list can be, list can be used to list all the packages that you currently have installed. But there's actually a little bit more. Conda is also an environment manager. So what this means is it can create isolated environments of separate that have their own set of packages. So uh, let's do an example. Let's say 
I'm working with this colleague and he you know, really is stuck on uh, Panda 0.16. And I'm gonna have to be switching back and forth and I don't really like installing and uninstalling packages. So I can create a new Conda environment, Conda create, uh, I have to give it a name. Uh, we'll call it pandas16. And then I tell it what I want to install. So I want to install pandas0.16. I also checked with my colleague, and he's actually using Python 2.7. Uh, I don't know why he hasn't updated yet, but I want to match his environment as well as I can. I say yes. It creates this environment. And now I do source activate so I have to activate in that environment. So this adjusts your path. Um, and now if I run Python, we'll see this is Python 2.7. And if I import pandas, in Python 2.7, you don't get tab completion. Um, so it's 0 0.16. Now, that's great. What happens if I want to go back to that other one? So all I have to do is source deactivate. That puts me back in my root environment. And the environment that I was actually using, so conda activate. Oh, uh, source activate was just uh, dpy, and if I run Python, that's back to my 3.5 with the latest version of pandas. Uh, recap, kind of create, will create a new environment, and then you can use source activate and deactivate to create kind of environments. Um, and these commands, all of the ones, work across all the different distributions, or all the different platforms. So it will work on your Windows machine, it will work on your Linux machine, whatever. Um, the source activate and deactivate, on Windows you don't need the word source. Uh, just kind of, I don't know. Um, uh, I should say though, packages are hard links, so if you make a bunch of environments, you tend to do this because they're fun, uh, you need to switch out a lot. If you make like 10 environments that all have the same packages, they don't all have to have a copy of it. They'll actually use hard links, so you won't have, it won't use a whole bunch of disk space. That said, you do end up using a lot of disk space because you find out you just like to install a bunch of things because it's so easy. Um, so how do I find Conda packages? They seem really cool. So their um, Continuum provides a bunch of packages uh, that they've built and have tested, but you can also find user-contributed packages on the uh, Anaconda Cloud. Um, so let's look at how this is done. So there's, oh, there's a command line interface. So I can do conda search. And let's say I want to find scikit-learn. So this is a machine learning language or a machine learning package. You see they've packaged all kinds of different versions, uh, linked against vi different Python versions, different versions of NumPy even. Um, but if I do a conda search, say, I really like machine learning, but I want to use Google's library, uh, which is TensorFlow. There's no results. So Continuum hasn't packaged this up yet. So I have to do one sneaky little thing. Um, OK. Uh, so this is just my root environment. There's nothing really sneaky about that. But So I want to search Anaconda Cloud. Um, so I have to use Anaconda and search. And let's see what TensorFlow looks like. There. So this is going to the Anaconda Cloud, anaconda.org, and finding user-contributed packages. And if we want to know about one of those, we can do Anaconda Show. We can choose one of those packages, and we find out this has a couple different versions, and it tells you exactly how to install it if you want to use that. Um, you can also just go to the website, and uh, if you search for it, you will find results, uh, and you can click on those and find out how to do various things. And I think I just, no, I didn't close my talk, good. OK, um, so Conda Search, Anaconda Search. Um, but how do you create a package? What happens if you create some software, you want to make it available, or you're using some obscure package and nobody's 
written it or you don't like how they've created the package. So Conda packages are built from recipes and then you can upload them to anaconda.org to share them with everyone in the world. Um, so how would you do this? So Conda's, uh, Conda packages are built from recipes. Um, I have a package called NMR glue. A recipe is just three files at minimum. You can add some more, but uh, this is kind of just a really basic one. Uh, there's first is this meta.yaml file, which is just a description of the package. You give it the version number. You tell it where it can find the source code for that. Uh, you can give it a URL. You can also give it a git or a other version control system, as well as a tag. You tell it uh, the build, just if you want to build this multiple times, if you find some bug, you can sh roll the build number without changing the version. And then you have to tell the uh, build system what else has to be installed at build time, and then also what has to be installed for the user to run this. Finally, uh, we need some tests. In this case, we just want to see if the package is importable. Um, and then some, uh, just a little bit of information about the package so that people can find it easier, the home page, the, UR, or the license, and a little uh, summary. There's two other packages. There's a build.sh. This is just the actual script that gets run on OS X or Linux that goes and builds the packages. So for most Python scripts, it's just going to be this dollar sign Python setup.py install. Um, you also have a package on Windows. And if you've ever written built packages on Windows, it's the same thing, setup.py.install. But Windows doesn't actually set an exit code, so you have to do it sneakily. Um, but you can just copy this. Uh, so to actually build the package, it's conda build, and then you have to give it a directory. In this case, we're just going to build everything currently in the directory. That goes, downloads everything. Again, things are cached. It's, all, it's very smart about this. And in the end, it runs a test. If it passes, you then get this nice little string. It says, hey, if you want to share this with everybody, which you probably do, right? Um, this is how you do it. So we will upload it. Uh, and now, at this point, it is available on anaconda.org in my channel for anyone to download if they want. Um, but you'll notice that this says OS X 64-bit. Um, this little Python is Python 3.5. Uh, so if I want to start building it for other things, it gets a little bit complicated. Um, and if I want to build it on you know, a Windows machine, I have to go find one of those. Uh, I mean, Linux I can probably emulate, but it might be a little difficult. Um, and so a lot of us got together, and um, uh, we created a, a community packaging group uh, called CondaForge, which is basically a bunch of us who are packaging a bunch of different uh, common libraries, kind of decided instead of each of us working on our own and kind of developing our own things, let's try and all work together, and we're going to have a community of recipes that we all, you know, feel is pretty good, but then we also made an infrastructure that we can build on all the various platforms against the last couple versions of Python and the last couple versions of NumPy, and they're all on a single channel so that you can kind of, uh, you don't have to go and search all these things, you can just kind of assume everything's in this one channel. Uh, so it's a reproducible method, everything's on GitHub, you can grab the recipe, you can redo it yourself if you want. Uh, the method that we use is all, uh, we, we really like Git repositories. I believe the CondaForge uh, organization has around 500 repos now. Uh, and the basic process is you create a pull request against the stage repo recipe, or stage recipes repository. That will trigger uh, three different continuous integration platforms that will go grab the, take the recipe, find the, the, basic, the, the source code, build the package against a couple different versions of Python, and see if everything works. If everything works, you get green lights, and you know, maybe your package is ready to, or your pull request is ready to merge. If not, you have a chance you can start fixing it. Uh, we have really smart people that review these packages so that they can give you some hints on how you can improve it. But once everything is working, you create a feedstock uh, so basically, when that pull request is merged, uh, some scripts go and create another repository that just has that recipe. Uh, and this feedstock 
uh, repository, again, rebuilds the packages, and uh, when they're all done, it actually uploads them to the ConduForge channel. So if we go here, this is the can. So we have 482 packages that you can download if you're so inclined. Um, and all of those are built automatically using the system. Uh, and any bug fixes or new versions of the uh, library are done in that feedstock repository. So we don't have to have, you know, 100 people all using one repository. So a final tool I want to talk about is Constructor. So we have all these really cool packages, but we still need to use Miniconda or Anaconda to install them, at least to, to bootstrap our environment. So Constructor is a tool for creating an installer from a collection of packages. Uh, it's open source, uh, again, by Continuum Analytics. They released it, I think, in March of this year, so it's relatively new. Uh, you can install it using, of course, Conda. Um, and you specify everything, the packages that you want to put in this installer, as well as some names and some graphics in a construct.yaml file. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's cross-platform, and it can create installers for OS X, Linux, and Windows. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea. If we took the Condeford packages and constructor, could we actually build a custom Python distribution that didn't use anything from Continuum other than the source code that they've given us? And the answer is almost, but not quite. Um, so Condeforge, we're not yet building uh, some of the really core packages. Uh, the, the Python pull request is still, still has a little bit of work, uh, and we kind of need those. But I did create a little test repository um, so ACPD, which is just a, a fun acronym for another Conda-based Python distribution, because I couldn't think of a better name. Uh, so it is a collection of recipes and uh, some scripts that will actually build all the recipe or all the Conda packages that you need to then build an installer, which can then install itself and rebuild itself without using any. Um, so it's basically self-hosting if you're familiar with the idea in compilers. Uh, the repository includes all the Conda recipes and the scripts, um, but currently it's limited to 64-bit Linux and Python 3.5, although I do have OS X working too, and there's more to come. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, check it out. Uh, but with that, I'd like to thank you for your time or your attention, and I'd welcome any questions. Thank you. to catch up, so time for one quick question while the next presenter is setting up the computer. Oh, actually, I'll pass you this. Okay. I have a patch for OpenCV. Repeat the question. Uh, so there, there is a, so the question was if I have an update to an existing package, where should I submit that? Um, that is in the feedstock repository. I checked there is an open CV, um, and I'm not the maintainer of that, but somebody else is. But uh, yeah, so if you find bugs in any of the Conda Forge packages or want them built slightly differently, submit them to that feedstock repository, and people will get notified, so you should see a response. Thank you again. Thank you, Jonathan.